In this video course, we're going to be talking about a variety of routing protocols, dynamic routing protocols that can help us keep the IP routing table and our routers up to date. There are different versions of RIP, RIP version 1, version 2, RIP next generation, OSPF versions 2 and 3, EIGRP, we're going to see BGP version 4, and some extensions to BGP version 4 that make it multi-protocol BGP. And with all of these options at our disposal, a fundamental design question when it comes to networking is, what routing protocol do we select for a particular application? And there are several different criteria that we might use to compare one routing protocol to another. For example, there's scalability. How large is your network today? How big do you think it might grow to someday? And the answers to those questions might influence you to select one routing protocol over another. For example, if we just had one or two sites, we might be able to use statically configured routes. But that doesn't scale very well. We probably want some sort of a dynamic routing protocol, and all of the options listed here on screen could certainly handle small to medium-sized networks, but when we get into larger networks, RIP, Routing Information Protocol, might not be a good choice because it uses a metric of hop count. How many routers do we have to travel through in order to get to a destination network? And it has a limit. It has a limit of 15 hops. If it has to pass through 16 routers to get to a destination network, we consider that network to be unreachable. EIGRP, OSPF, they can scale to very large enterprise networks, but BGP, Border Gateway Protocol, that's thought of as the routing protocol that runs the internet. It interconnects lots of autonomous systems. An autonomous system, by the way, we define that as being a network under a single administrative control. Your network and your company might be one autonomous system. And if you connect out to a couple of different internet service providers, ISPs, they're each considered to be their own autonomous system. And BGP specializes in routing between autonomous systems. Another criterion we might consider is vendor interoperability. Do you have an old Cisco shop? Or do you have third-party routers that need to integrate with your Cisco routers? And the answer to that question a few years ago might have been a deal breaker for EIGRP because for many years, EIGRP, Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, it was a Cisco proprietary protocol. But in early 2013, Cisco made a big announcement. They said, we're going to release EIGRP to the IETF standards body as an informational RFC. And the result of that is that other vendors can integrate EIGRP into their hardware. And what this means to us is EIGRP is not necessarily off limits to a multi-vendor environment. We just need to make sure that whatever hardware we're using, it's going to support the desired routing protocol. Something else that might influence our selection of a routing protocol is how familiar or how comfortable are we or maybe how comfortable is the in-house IT staff with a particular routing protocol. If we have a group of network engineers who have worked with OSPF for years, they might be more likely to take advantage of some of OSPF's non-trivial features. They might be able to tune it more efficiently than they could tune EIGRP simply because they know it better. And enterprise networking design is also concerned with convergence. Let's talk for a moment about what convergence really entails. Imagine that we have a network like this. We've got a laptop trying to reach a server, and the primary path between the laptop and the server is going to be over that fast Ethernet path. As you see on screen, the bottom path from router R1 to router R3 to router R4. However, let's say that we had a network failure. The link between R3 and R4 went bad. Well, if we're running a dynamic routing protocol, we should be able to reroute around that network failure. We should be able to go from R1 up to R2 and then down to R4. And how quickly that rerouting can happen is called the convergence time. And convergence tends to be really fast with OSPF and EIGRP. In fact, the convergence time is typically on the order of just a few seconds, while RIP or BGP could take minutes to converge. What else do we consider as we're selecting a routing protocol? Well, in larger networks, summarization might be a requirement. Can a routing protocol represent multiple individual networks as a summary route? Let's consider an example of what summarization looks like. Here we have router R1, and its routing table knows about four different networks that we have listed here. 10.0.0.0 slash 24, 10.0.1.0 slash 24, 10.0.2.0 slash 24, and 10.0.3.0 slash 24. And if we examine these different networks, notice that the first two octets, the 10.0 octets, they're identical. And if we take a close look at that third octet, as we have diagrammed in this table, we have several bits in common there as well. We've got six bits in common as we count left to right. And with six bits in common, what we could do is represent all four of these networks as one summary address. 
To do that, we take all of the common bits, and that will be our network address, and then we'll set all of the host bits to zeros. This means that in the first octet, we'll have a 10. In the second octet, we'll have a zero. In the third octet, we've got all zeros through the first six bits, and we're setting all the host bits to zero. That means the two rightmost bits in the third octet, they're going to be zeros. And as a result, the third octet is going to be zero. In the fourth octet, it's full of host bits. It's all going to be zero. This means that we can advertise a single summary route of 10.0.0.0 slash 22, the 22 representing how many bits we have in common. 16 bits from the first two octets, and then six additional bits in the third octet. And this could reduce the size of our routing tables. This could also ease the processor burden on a router because it doesn't have to run, for example, the Dijkstra algorithm on as many routes if it doesn't know about the individual route entries. What else might we consider? Well, we should know if the routing protocol needs to be an interior or an exterior gateway protocol. Let's distinguish between those two different types of protocols. They're called an IGP or an EGP. IGP is an interior gateway protocol meaning that we're going to be running within an autonomous system. An EGP is an exterior gateway protocol, meaning that we're going to be running between autonomous systems. For example, we've got company A on screen connecting out to a couple of ISPs, ISP1 and ISP2. Within company A, let's imagine that that's within a single autonomous system. We're going to select from an IGP, and that might be RIP, Routing Information Protocol. It might be OSPF, Open Shortest Path First, or it might be EIGRP, Enhanced Interior Gateway routing protocol. And another one that the route curriculum doesn't cover, but I'll just mention it, is ISIS, Intermediate System to Intermediate System. These are what we typically find running within an autonomous system. However, if we're going out to another autonomous system, maybe we're going out to one of our ISPs, we're probably going to be running an exterior gateway protocol. And back in the day, there used to be an exterior gateway protocol that was literally named exterior gateway protocol. It was an EGP that was named EGP, but that's been many years ago. Today, there's really only one EGP that you're going to run into, and that's BGP, Border Gateway Protocol. But to be technical about it, there is an option for running BGP within an autonomous system, but typically BGP is going to be running between autonomous systems. Now let's consider one more criterion for selecting a routing protocol, and that is how we classify a protocol. We have three main categories of routing protocols. We have distance vector, link state, and path vector. Using the four routing protocols that we've primarily been talking about in this video, let's classify them as either distance vector, link state, or path vector. But first, let's define what are these different protocol classifications. In general, we think of a distance vector routing protocol sending a full copy of its routing table to its directly connected neighbors. And it's going to do that periodically, even if there have been no network changes. RIP is an example of that. And the data structure of a distance vector routing protocol is going to have a distance and a vector. In other words, in order to reach a specific network, we're going to know how far is it. There's going to be some sort of a metric. With RIP, it's hop count. And there's going to be a vector. There's going to be a direction to get to that destination network out of which interface do we leave or what is the next hop IP address to get to this destination. But other than knowing distance information and vector information, a distance vector routing protocol does not really have an overall view of a network. It doesn't have a map of the terrain. A link state routing protocol, however, does have a map of the terrain. In fact, it works much like our car's navigation systems. If I'm trying to go from my hometown to Cisco headquarters in San Jose, California, I could put the destination address in my navigation system, and it would know the different roads that I could take to get me from my location to San Jose. It would give a lower cost to interstates. It would give a higher cost to back roads. But by being able to see the entire map and alternate paths, it could run an algorithm. Literally, your car's navigation system runs the Dijkstra Shortest Path First algorithm, just like OSPF, in order to make that routing decision. That's what a link state routing protocol can do for us. And finally, a path vector routing protocol knows information about the exact path that packets are going to take to reach a specific destination network. For example, BGP is a path vector routing protocol, and as we're looking at the BGP table, we can see the exact path to get to a destination network. And the path is a listing of autonomous systems into which we have to enter in order to get to that destination network. Now, how do we categorize these routing protocols? Well, RIP is a distance vector routing protocol. OSPF, and not listed here, but also ISIS, those are link state routing protocols. EIGRP is a bit more tricky. EIGRP is considered to be an advanced distance vector routing protocol. 
And we say that it's advanced because it's not limited by some of the drawbacks of a basic distance vector writing protocol. For example, EIGRP can send triggered updates. If there is a change in network conditions, then we can notify our neighbors. But we're not going to blast out everything we know every 30 seconds like RIP does with EIGRP. We can use triggered updates instead. And BGP is considered to be a path vector routing protocol. And those are some of the characteristics for us to consider as we're selecting a routing protocol and also some of the characteristics that you should keep an eye out for throughout this video course as we're talking about the inner workings of these routing protocols.